Tech family, I've been dreaming of this day for some time where I make a video on the best laptop that you can buy for a hundred US dollars. Yep, you heard me, a hundred dollars. I cop so much crap every time I put out a video on what I would consider a budget laptop, something for around say 500 bucks. Viewers leave me comments like, you think $500 is budget? Maybe for rich people. And I get it, I truly do. For some of you, that is a lot of money. So I've been thinking, how cool would it be if I could find a usable, full featured laptop that doesn't suck for just $100? Yep, full featured. No Chromebooks allowed here, it must run a full version of Windows and no secondhand laptops either. It must be repeatable, a laptop that you can actually go and buy, not a one-off great deal off say eBay or Craigslist. The problem is, I literally couldn't find any bona fide new laptop for close to $100. Even Chromebooks are almost impossible to find at that price point. So when I saw this Asus E210 laptop on sale at Best Buy for $109, I bought it. And today we're going to answer the question, is a $100 laptop actually viable? Let me introduce you to my Asus E210. It's an extremely premium laptop as you had no doubt guessed. You've got the incredible lightning fast Intel Celeron N4020 inside with two cores and two threads that runs at an insane speed of 1.1 gigahertz with a burst of 2.8. The processor is perfectly paired with four gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which runs in single channel mode. For storage, you've got a generous 64 gig of the eMMC variety. And for the display, you've got an 11 inch 1360 by 768 resolution TFT panel. Joking aside, this is literally the minimum specs you need to run Windows or to be honest, pretty much anything for that matter. The laptop comes out of the box with Windows S, the cut down version of Windows where you can only run apps from the Microsoft Store. You can easily switch it over though to a full version of Windows 11 where you can run any program you wish. But as I said, so long as it can run on a computer with specs like this one. Now. Asus does offer variants of this laptop with a faster four core, four thread processor, more RAM and better storage options, but that would likely cost more. Oh, and when I bought mine, it was on sale at Best Buy. Best Buy is well known to regularly put laptops on rotating sale. So if this or any laptop you wanna buy from them isn't on sale at the time you wanna buy it, try waiting until it is, or maybe install a price tracker so you can track that. But should you actually buy this laptop? After spending over two weeks with it, having a lot of fun, my answer, it's no. You see, I thought I knew what I was getting myself into. I fully expected many things to suck. For example, the display to be rough. It's an old school TFT panel from last century. That means the panel is incredibly washed out unless viewed from the perfect angle. It's also very dim with poor color accuracy. Plus, with a screen size of only 11 inches and a low 1366 by 768 resolution, you won't be seeing a lot of information on screen. My Excel test to see how much information I could comfortably see on screen without needing to squint clearly demonstrates this. Honestly, after using this laptop for more than a couple of minutes, I found the display a little painful on my eyes. The keyboard and trackpad I actually was pleasantly surprised with. The keys have ample key travel and a satisfying click. It has a nice comfortable layout and this cool looking yellow enter key. The only downside is the lack of a backlight for the keys. So you won't really be able to use this laptop in the dark. The trackpad was good enough to be accurate. Although as this is a mechanical one, you'll lose accuracy when clicking in the left and right bottom corners. The chassis and overall build quality of the laptop is good for a plastic one. It feels solid and looks nice enough other than the super large bezels around the display, which makes it look dated when the lid is open. I measured that you could actually fit a 12.5 inch display if the bezels were slimmer. Weight isn't too bad, although I would have hoped for 11 inch laptop to weigh less. I've tested laptops with substantially larger screens that weigh around the same, like the Lenovo IdeaPad Carbon Edition, which is a great laptop by the way. Ports wise, you've got two USB-A and one USB-C all of the slower 3.15 gigabit variety. The USB-C port doesn't support DisplayPort over USB-C or charging. So you'll be stuck using an HDMI connection for an external monitor and carrying the barrel pin charger with you. It's a shame you can't use USB-C charging as those chargers are becoming ubiquitous. By the way, on the HDMI connection, 
ASUS's website says it is a version 1.4 connection, which should not be able to drive a 4K monitor at 60 frames per second. Those connections only have bandwidth to drive a 4K monitor at 30 frames per second or a lower resolution 1440 monitor at 60. I tested it though and was able to get 60 frames per second at 4K, indicating it was actually an HDMI 2.0 connection. Look, I could go on and on and talk about this laptop. The speakers, which are loud and passable, but kind of sound like you're playing music through an airplane's PA system. Or the webcam, which is so bad, it would make the most beautiful Instagram model look like a potato. But I value your time, so let's just cut to the chase. Every facet of this laptop was livable for someone who is really strapped for cash, except one major showstopper, performance. It was abysmal. Even the most basic tasks, which I haven't noticed being slow on a laptop for say the last five years, just, you know, switching apps or navigating Windows settings, those would be incredibly slow on this laptop. And don't get me started on any performance tasks. It took me ages to run benchmarks. I mean, check out this Geekbench score, which tests common performance tasks. And now Cinebench, which tests how the laptop runs when the performance of the CPU is maxed out. It is a small fraction of the performance of say a laptop with an Intel i5 or a 7 processor, even one from a couple of generations ago. To be honest, I was expecting performance to be bad going into this video. But I was excited by the challenge to see if by tinkering around with this laptop, I could make it perform acceptably for someone who just doesn't have that much money. As a laptop's performance is limited by the slowest component in it, I initially thought the most egregious component would be the storage. This laptop has a painfully slow eMMC drive, orders of magnitude slower than a modern NVMe SSD that you will find in most laptops. Having lived the nightmare of laptops running off slow mechanical hard drives, I thought that replacing that may help. You see, storage speed is not only important when loading programs. Laptops with extremely low amounts of memory, like this one, rely on using their storage as an extension of memory. If the operating system has the need for more memory, i.e. a new program or browser window is opened, to free up that memory, it moves open programs that are not currently in use out of memory and onto storage. In this case, that extremely slow eMMC. Since I can't increase the memory to a healthy 8GB as it is soldered, I tried to speed the laptop up by adding a much faster NVMe SSD drive, which I bought off Amazon for only $27. Luckily, this laptop had an M.2 slot for me to put that new drive in. I'll place a link to the one I bought in the description below. After reinstalling everything on that drive, I did notice that it was a little faster, particularly when loading programs, but it was still just too slow. The processor was pretty much always maxed out. This laptop has a two-core, two-thread processor, so if you are syncing files using Dropbox while Windows is running an antivirus update in the background and you are trying to browse the internet, that's one too many things for this processor to handle. So one of them is going to have to wait until the other finishes. When you combine this with the low performance of the processor at only 1.1 to 2.8 gigahertz, you'll be waiting a while. Anyway, since the performance of this laptop was so bad under Windows to the point of just being annoying, I decided to try Linux. Linux, by the way, is the operating system powering many of the servers that run the internet, as well as other things like Android. It is available in several different distributions that are designed for different purposes. Linux is generally known to be less processor intensive than running Windows. So I tried Fedora 36, as it is the Linux distro that is famous for having the latest software available. Unfortunately, same deal. In fact, while writing this very script for this video in Google Docs on Chrome on Fedora, the browser outright crashed. I haven't experienced this on any other laptop running Fedora Linux that I've tried. The only good news is that since this laptop is so underpowered, there is literally no fan noise as there is no real cooling solution. Only a copper heat spreader is installed with no fans. The laptop also never gets hot or that warm to the touch. Battery life wasn't good. This laptop only has a small 38 milliwatt hour one. I measured 6.5 hours playing a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi. That was on Windows best power efficiency mode with a screen two notches down in brightness as it's not that bright to begin with. Look, let's wrap. Can you buy a full featured laptop for $100? US Yes. Should you buy one? Absolutely not. If you added up the seconds and minutes that you'll spend waiting for this laptop to process, I honestly believe you'll be better off flipping burgers at McDonald's until you've saved enough money for a more powerful machine.
I hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Plus, there's plenty more videos coming. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.